Tesla have just released their earnings. What are your thoughts, especially considering at the moment there's quite a lot of volatility, there's quite a lot of uh, contentious thoughts going on in the Tesla community at the moment. Has anything you saw from those earnings changed your long-term thesis in the company? So my, my thoughts are, are a little a bit of everywhere in regards to Tesla earnings. So first off, I think we have to start with the positive before we kind of get to the negative here, uh, because I feel like a lot of people are just going straight to the negative. They're talking about the margins or whatever, and they're just going there. I think the, the fact is this company just grew units in, in a massive, massive way. If, if I recall, units was up something like 30 percent uh, ish year over year. And, you know, tell me another company who wouldn't gladly take Tesla's place and be like, we would love to grow units, you know, 30, 40%. Most automakers are, are struggling to even grow their business at all right now. And here you are with Tesla's just taking massive, massive market share. And the bears like to point out, they like to say, oh, but Tesla, they might be losing market share in EVs. And it's like, well, have you, do you understand like Tesla's going after total vehicles and each and every year they're becoming a bigger and bigger chunk of the total addressable market when it comes to automobiles. Tesla is not going to get to 5 million, 10 million, 20 million cars a year like they want to get to with just going after, you know, whatever the current EV market is. The fact is we have a massive dynamic change going from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. And it's been a lot of us have been talking about that for, you know, five years now, right? And that change is becoming more and more evident with each passing year where you're seeing more and more Teslas on the road, more and more EVs, more and more auto manufacturers that are going to EVs, right? And um, so we're at a very exciting kind of inflection point in Tesla's history where like just massive amounts of people are starting to buy Teslas and then tell their friends and family. And then those folks are, are thinking about getting Teslas as their next vehicle. And I think one of the important things to remember when you see something like this most recent earnings is this is a process. This business doesn't happen overnight. This is a multi-year process, right? If you even look at something like the iPhone, when, when Apple launched the iPhone, that wasn't like they launched it and, and everybody and their grandma went out and bought a new iPhone in 2008. It, was, it wasn't the way it worked. It's just year after year, they sold more iPhones and more iPhones and more iPhones, right? And the smartphone market got bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And now in 2023, it's, it's hard to even conceive of somebody not having a smartphone, right? Versus 15 years ago, it, it was like you didn't know anybody that had a smartphone. Like that was crazy. If you had a smartphone 15 years ago, which was what, 2008, like that was you were on the forefront of technology. And if I even look at myself with having a Tesla, I've been a Tesla customer for about four years now. And when I first got my Teslas, like most people didn't even know what that was. They're like, wait, what kind of car is that? And I'd have to tell them, there's no one that doesn't know my cars now. Like the only thing some people get confused with is like, what kind of model of Tesla is that? But everybody knows Tesla, right? So they're, they're reaching an escape velocity. And I think that became more apparent on this earnings as well. It's just like Tesla's at escape velocity now where they can just continue to grow massively bigger and bigger. And just their, their name is so famous out there. It's known if you're going to consider an EV, you're going to consider Tesla before everything else. Okay. Now, in the short term, we're in a bad environment. And this is something I called out over a year ago. And I said, like, we're going to have basically a tough time period with the economy for big ticket purchase items. And I, I really came to this awareness at the very beginning of, of 2022 of like, oh, boy, Home sales are going to be rough. Auto sales are going to be rough. Anything big ticket purchase items, furniture is going to be in a, a tough place for the next couple of years. And that's sure enough what we're seeing, right? When If you're talking about the Fed raising rates the way they have, you're going to create a tougher economy. You're going to create a, a tougher situation for buying things that are on loans. And if we think about it, like most people are going to buy a Tesla on a loan. You're not going to buy a $40,000, $50,000, you know, Model 3, Model Y, whatever, usually cash. Like most people don't do that. You're going to buy it on a loan. And so that it's obviously gotten much more expensive to do that. So Tesla is taking a short term hit for a long term gain here. And Elon Musk has taken a, a step out of Je Jeff Bezos playbook here. OK, Jeff Bezos is the, always always been the king of sacrificing short term margins and profitability for long term gains for Amazon. And he's instilled that into that sp specific company. Right. And I think Elon's doing the same exact thing where he understands like, we're taking market share right now. This is our time in a weak market. That's when you can really take market share in a massive way. That's what they're focused on. And 
people forget the services side of Tesla. I think because a lot of folks, most people aren't Tesla customers yet, right? So they don't understand the services component of Tesla. They don't understand having the satellite maps that cost 10 or $12 a month. And uh, you pay for that for your Teslas, like I do for both my Teslas. They don't understand like, you know, the supercharger network and how much of a benefit that is to Tesla's overall and how much money they could potentially make long term if they want to make money from that right they don't understand like obviously services revenue from the component of something goes wrong with your car and having to get it fixed or tesla insurance tesla auto insurance over time which if tesla wants to take that further than just auto insurance there's many other uh, insurances you can have what if they want to do home insurance maybe that's a thing over time and obviously we're also i thought the other important thing on that earnings that i don't think was talked about enough because everybody got so tied into the auto the auto business was you know check out the check out the uh, storage business the battery storage business and the growth year on year over the year there and how much growth they're experiencing in that business and that's a business I don't even talk about and I don't think it ever gets talked about enough in Tesla and it's just like that's a huge component of their business right so for me overall when I looked at that earnings I said this is a company that is in a tough market right now for their products because of the overall macroeconomic landscape but they're doing as well as you could ever possibly want a company to do given the current market conditions and so overall i was uh i was a-okay with that current earnings so just then you mentioned the energy business there's kind of a few different call options for tesla looking forward into the future you know energy is one fsd is one bot is one uh we heard elon talking about dojo how do you how do you personally model those into the future? Because some people go absolutely bananas and give it some insane numbers, which is probably not necessarily the correct thing to do. And then others just don't even include it whatsoever. So, you know, how do you sort of approach that problem? So I, I, I do like you like you kind of called it out there, call options. I do kind of look at those as call options on the business, right? And me personally, I don't I don't even factor those in much for earnings. I believe Tesla is very undervalued right now based upon the current PE on the stock. Basically, it's trading at a forward PE of, you know, let's call it 30-ish, something in the low 30s likely, right? And for a company with Tesla's growth, that's far too low, far too low. Like they, this company should be commanding a forward PE of at least 50 plus, if not 70 plus on this company easily. So I, I just look at it from kind of the auto business and the services business around that. Now, I do think the next massive potential growth engine outside of autos that's a game changer for Tesla, right? I think the storage business is going to continue to be a nice complement, but I don't think that's necessarily a game changer. I do think the robo-taxi opportunity if Tesla nails this over the next few years is the next epic opportunity for the company, right? Because, I mean, imagine, you know, a world... 10 years from now where it's just, you know, it's, it's very commonplace to just be able to get on your phone or whatever devices we're using at that time, 10 years from now. Right. And just like a car just pulls up to your door and you don't even have to own a car and it's far cheaper to just, you know, take a Tesla car and, and it drives you exactly where you need to go. And it does it in a far safer manner than what you would do it in. Right. Cause it's a far better driver. And also it's um, let's call it far cheaper. Right. And so I could imagine a world like that. And, the, the winner for that game will be the one that can not only have the technology, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few companies that have the technology, Tesla should be the leader there, but it will also be the company that can do it the most efficient way. And for Tesla, they're going to be like the only automaker who's going to be in the running for this. So when you think about it from that context, they can produce the cars, not have to worry about selling for a profit margin because they're selling it to their own fleet, which could be very interesting, right? Um, and could make them far more profitable, far faster. And I think if, if I think about the other thing that will likely win that market long term, which once again, this is like a 10 year out game, but it will be who's doing it the fastest. So I think one of the reasons Amazon succeeded so much over the years, right, is because Amazon went from like, oh, you could get your package in a few days to then it's like you can get it within two days to now a lot of times I can order an Amazon package and it's at my house within one day. And I wouldn't be surprised if eventually Amazon has it where it's at your house within an hour or two. And that's where I think that company's going over time. So Tesla, imagine, you know, if you, you know, want to, uh, you know, a, a, let's call it a ride in a Tesla car, the car's at your door within 10 minutes, five minutes. Who else will be able to produce it at that specific time? They might be the only company. Maybe it's at your door within three minutes because there's so many cars r riding around everywhere, just ready to rock and roll, right? So, and, and we know Tesla's just phenomenal with data. So that's, in my opinion, the next let's call it multi-hundred billion dollar opportunity for Tesla. But, 
you know, for now, for the next, I would say, if you're just looking at the stock for the next two, three, four years, it's really about the auto business. It's really about cyber truck coming and what they're going to be able to do there. And I don't think there's a lot of people taking cyber truck nearly as serious enough from the auto industry. I don't think Ford's taking them serious enough. I don't think GM's taking them serious enough. We know Ford in, in GM can move, you know, between those two, maybe 1.5 to 2 million trucks a year. And I don't think they're taking Cybertruck nearly serious enough. So when Cybertruck hits the market, obviously Model Y continues to ramp, Model 3, and these price points are getting so attractive that I think if you were thinking about getting a, a, an SUV, I think you have to think about getting a Model Y. I think if you're thinking about getting a new car, I think you have to think about getting a Model 3, right? Model 3, Model Y. I think those are just the vehicles you have to consider. And so, you know, the, the rest of the businesses, I don't even really give those value. They're exciting. Elon mentioned, you know, in terms of what they can do on the AI side, that that in itself could be a multi-hundred billion dollar opportunity. But we, we got to wait for that to kind of play out. For me with a company, I get, it's got to be kind of obvious that they're going to succeed in this, you know, specific market before I really start assigning major value there. Tesla for me was when I got in the stock, it was obvious that Model 3 was the future. And, um, and so that was one of the things that got me in. And I couldn't have got in the stock when it was Model S, Model X, because it was too confusing then. Model 3, I was already sold. So at the moment, Tesla is seeing a lot of margin compression. We've seen prices come down. And now within the community, the contentious topic is, should Tesla advertise? They've got money in the bank. They could do it. In your opinion, should Tesla advertise? I don't see a need for it. No. Um, you know, if you really look at how much Tesla's growing units, I don't think they could grow units probably much better. I don't think they would get a great ROI on advertising right now. Obviously, Tesla's, you know, and Elon, I trust in his decision making. So if that's a route he wanted to go, he'd go that route. I just don't see a need for it. When you're growing units the way Tesla's still growing units, and you're far, I mean, it's not even close to how much they're outgrowing the industry. I mean, it's, it's by a, a massive margin in terms of that, right? It, I don't think in this given market, I don't think there's anything Tesla could really do much better than, than the way they're executing right now. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that up to Elon's decision. But for me, it's just it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense.